Good uh, afternoon, everybody. So this session is about the changing landscape for search engines. So let me lower the intellectual tone that you've put uh, sky high, uh, uh, Julia, by sim making it simple. The, in very simple terms, search engines are now subject to take down requests as a result of uh, on the basis of the right of erasure. That's it. Okay. That's the, that. Those are the. That's the changing landscape for search engines. And I think that's the main conclusion. Since I have a, a few more minutes to talk, um, <laughs> um, I would like to explore a little bit some of the perhaps some of the finest points. Going back to the decision, to the uh, Court of Justice decision, some of those finest points that were made by, by the court. Because, for example, the court merely skimmed through critical concepts like personal data and processing. When you, when you read the judgment, there are seven paragraphs of about, on average, four lines each covering personal data and processing which if you print it is about, it's less than half, it's, the, it's about half a page. So this, there were assumptions, of course, that, that, that were made, but for example, in relation to, to personal data, the view that the court took was that the, the data that was being indexed by Google and of course any other search engines in this case, qualified as information relating to an identifier or identifiable individual, which of course is the definition of personal data in the directive. But once the working party devoted a sort of 40 page document to simply dissect that sentence of information related to an identified or identifiable natural person or individual, the court just took the view that because um, this information does relate to, to, to people and therefore um, that's being indexed, then that's personal data. The question is, is it personal data to the search engine? And that was not looked at. The other, uh, uh, just looking at the, the definition of processing, of course, what the court said that the, all this organizing and again indexing and then make, making the information available, that squarely fits the definition of processing. Because processing, as we know, covers pretty much anything you can ever do with data digitally at least. And the court went on to say that that was the case despite the fact or regardless of the fact that search engines do not distinguish what they, they actually do with, with, with that information, do not distinguish the nature of the information. They just do that technologically or al algorithmically or however you want to describe that with all the information that crosses the internet. But that is processing of personal data. And in line uh, with, with, this, with this thinking, of course, the, what the court did in a little bit more detail was to expand or to, to interpret the concept of controller, which of course is defined in, in, in the Data Protection Directive. And I can, I can see that personal data and, and processing can be an absolute concept. So it's either personal data or it isn't. And it is either processing or it isn't. But controller, when you look at the definition, in the directive, is down to that subject, that, that entity making decisions. There is an intention in being a controller. That's the whole point. It is determining the purposes and the means. Determining, the termination. Determination involves decision making. <coughs> 
my understanding of the world. But it's not, a, it's not an absolute concept. It's, it's, a, it's a concept that involves some thinking. Say, this is what we're, what we're going to do with the data. That's what the controller does. They do the thinking. They do the decision making. And the court, of course, took the, the, the purposive interpretation of this, of this definition to say, ah, but the objective, the, and they use this word, the objective of the definition in the directive is precisely to make it really broad so that it covers any, any activity dealing with data. So when you add all this, of course, the, 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 the interpretation of personal data, the interpretation of process, and the interpretation of controller, um, <coughs> the implication, this changing landscape for, for search engines, it's, it's very clear that non, no, not only search engines are not an intermediary in the sense of in an intermediary is not really respond, is somewhere in between. No, no, the, the search engines are the super controllers. There is no controller in the world that I can think of that processes more personal data than a search engine. If you think about it, it's the biggest controller ever. Applying this, this criteria, it is the super controller. And there is no one that processes more personal data therefore. I'm not exaggerating. This has to be the implication, which means that all the obligations that apply to controllers would apply to a search engine. All the obligations, and then you look at all the principles and all the conditions for processing personal data, and of course personal data we know has a subcategory of sensitive personal data. So if you add that dimension, the certain grounds for processing of sensitive personal data, then you start thinking, okay, well, well, but this is just much more than the right to be forgotten then. But then you start thinking, but hold on, I was saying, no one has said, no one has said, or maybe no one has been heard saying it at least, that the implications of this are such that uh, uh, basically this search engine model is, non, is simply non-compliant. And the reason why that's not being publicly said, or at least the regulators, I don't think, have said it, is because it's seen as going a bit too far. And the reason why it's seen as going a bit too far is because it has unintended consequences. And here is what we see sometimes with, with a decision that can only be taken so far because if it's really taken all the way in terms of the implications it should really have, technically speaking, it has unintended consequences. Is this a weakness? Is this a reality of life, of an imperfect world? Maybe it's a bit of both. But this is, this is an issue that is certainly raised by, by this decision. Perfect, an, an imperfect decision for an imperfect world. But, there is even a greater implication to all of this, from a, at least from a legal perspective, because it doesn't affect just search engines, it affects everybody else. Is the determination of the applicability of the law, which is also addressed by, by the case. And I mean, this is what has really messed things up for everybody, because the, the, the way in which the law or the, the, the directive was interpreted in terms of the applicability of the law, we know when we look at the directive, the criteria are relatively straightforward. We have Article 4, uh, 418, applicability determined on the basis of the establishment of the control in the EU. 41C, um, applicability determined on the basis of, the, of where the equipment is, is located. And w when the controller is, of course, elsewhere, the control, control outside the EU, <coughs> but equipment in the EU. Here, we, we've seen a mixture of the two. It's a, I don't know, 4 one C plus, or however you want it. Because the, the, the interpretation that was given is the state, the, the controller is really outside, 
the EU. Everybody acknowledged that. But the establishment is in, an establishment exists in the EU. And the kind of the link of the two is what determines the, the applicability of the law. So this is this seems to have been accepted. But of course, regulators in Europe are now looking at this and, and are applying this local establishment criterion to situations where the controller is in the EU, not necessarily in that country, but somewhere in the EU, not outside the EU, in Mountain View, California, in the EU, somewhere in, a, in one of the 28 member states. But the applicability of the law is being interpreted as EU-wide. So where until now, until we, very recently, we had the certainty that an EU-based data controller was only subject to the law of the country where it was established. Now we are seeing the law being interpret interpreted in such a way that an EU-based controller is subject to the law of that country where it is established and everywhere else in the EU, wherever there is some form of presence, even if the controller is not based there. So to conclude, to conclude, um, I think this, um, sometimes we, we, we talk about the, the, the European Commission being very ambitious in their, in their policy making. And <clears throat> we're about a year away from seeing a law that is probably the most ambitious data protection law we will ever see in the world. We don't even need to wait for that. The Court of Justice of the European Union, in just one judgment, a 20-page judgment, has extended and created the greatest extension of European data protection law ever attempted. And that's why this, this case is so, so massive. And that's the, the changing la landscape for certain changes and everyone else. Thank you.